Brothers and sisters, we had commenced yesterday the story of the ascension and the story of the journey by night known as Al-Isra wal-Mi'raj. And this had happened as a gift to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after what was known as the year of sorrow or grief or sadness, Amul Huzn, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had lost his uncle, he lost his wife Khadija radiallahu anha, he lost meaning he went to At-Ta'if and there also he was beaten and he was made to bleed and they did not accept the message he came back to Mecca to Al-Mukarramah and persecutions continued there so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a gift and in the 11th year of prophethood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam whilst the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was resting in the house of Umm Muhani as we mentioned yesterday his cousin and that is where he was sleeping and Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam came and took him to Al-Baytul Haram, to where the Kaaba is. And Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam there had, according to the narrations, slit the chest of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, removed his heart and washed it with zamzam. This was again, this had happened in the past and it repeated itself according to the books of the seerah thrice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. It was washed with zamzam. The angels had come and washed the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, filled it with yaqeen. And as we know, the conviction is one of the most important things when it comes to belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when it comes to Islam and Muslimin. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was then taken on what was known as a buraq. Buraq, an animal, which is not between a mule and a donkey, a white animal. And... It took Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Mecca to Al-Mukarramah all the way to Jerusalem in Baytul Maqdis in Jerusalem. Masjid Al-Aqsa as we know it today. And with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was there in no time. But as he was traveling, he noticed everything on the way. Subhanallah. He noticed everything on the way. When he got there, Subhanallah, he was made to meet some of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from amongst them, Jesus may peace be upon him, from amongst them, Moses may peace be upon him, Ibrahim, Abraham may peace be upon him, Isa, Musa, Ibrahim alayhim salam These were some of the prophets who were there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had instructed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Baytul Maqdis, in Masjid Al-Aqsa, in the particular place, to lead them in prayer with two rak'ah of prayer. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an imam. He led them in prayer and then he came out and he was taken up to the heavens. We believe that before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Jesus may peace be upon him, was taken up. He was taken up in body and soul. And he was taken up alive before he was crucified, before he was killed. We believe that there was no crucifixion, nor was there any killing. But before they could harm him, he was taken up to heavens, the heavens. And at the moment he is there. And at the same time, we also believe that he will be returning before the end of time. This is the belief of the Muslims. That Jesus, may peace be upon him, is alive. He has been taken up into the heavens by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. He is in the second heaven. And he will return to the earth closer to the end of time. So it had happened in the past. It is nothing impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here it happened again. This time Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taken up to the heavens with Jibreel, the angel Gabriel, may peace be upon him. Taken all the way up as they got to the first heaven. A caller called asking a question. As they wanted to enter, who are you? I am Jibreel. Who is with you? Muhammad is with me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Has he been sent for? Which means he's invited here. Yes, he is. It opened and he went in. Lo and behold, he met Adam alayhi salatu was salam. First heaven. So Adam alayhi salam, the first of human beings. And the first of those who were sent to his own children in order to remind them what was right and wrong. He welcomed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not only as a child, because obviously he is the father. But also as a colleague, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. And alhamdulillah, thereafter, after meeting him and being welcomed, 
he proceeded up with Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam to the second heaven. As they got up, again the same question asked and they were allowed in again and he met two people. Who were they? Two prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One was Jesus, may peace be upon him. And as we said, Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam is alive and he was taken up in the condition that he was alive. So we believe that he did not die. May Allah's peace be upon him. And with him was Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam, the one known as John, John the Baptist. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them both and grant them goodness. And may we be from amongst those who learn a lesson from the beautiful life of Jesus. May peace be upon him and from his sacrifices and miracles. And the same time, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who realize that the end of prophethood came with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are fortunate to be from his ummah. After that, he proceeded to the next heaven. When he proceeded, in fact, he was welcomed by the two. And the same thing happened where they, they welcomed him, congratulated him, and he proceeded to the third heaven. In the third heaven, he met Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, the most handsome of all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith says he was granted half of all beauty, subhanallah. So the other half, the other 50% is split between the rest of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and make us from amongst those really who can appreciate whatever we look like. I've actually said it in the past, your identity, you did not apply for it. It's Allah who chose it for you. Don't get upset. A person this way, that way, every one of us has something that will not be perfect. You know, you have one shoulder a little bit low, a little bit, no one notices it. You have a nose slightly this way, one eye a bit bigger, smaller, one brow this way, that way. Don't worry. You cannot get it perfect, number one. Number two is, if you become conscious, you only become from amongst those who are ungrateful to Allah. Don't worry. Whatever you look like is unique. That is you. That's what makes you you. Allahu Akbar. May Allah be pleased with us and may we be pleased also with Allah's decisions for us. So, he was welcomed again, mashallah, Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam welcomed him and thereafter they proceeded to the next heaven. Another messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Idris alayhi salam, he was there, he met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Jibreel, he welcomed them and so on. As they progressed up the heavens, every time they were asked, who was it? The answer came, Jibreel, who is with you? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has he been called for? Yes, he has. Then the gates open and they go up into the next heaven. The, the next heaven, they met Harun alayhi salatu was salam. That was the fifth heaven. Harun alayhi salatu was salam, he welcomed them and mashallah, thereafter they proceeded to one of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who went through a lot. Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And the Prophet Musa alayhi salam welcomed them and mashallah, he was so happy to meet them. And thereafter, as they are progressing, one narration says he began to cry. Musa alayhi salam. One narration says this, it's important that we make mention of it. And when he was asked, what is it? He says, because you are a messenger who will have many more followers on the day of Qiyamah than myself. Subhanallah. And then they proceeded to the next heaven where they met Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Seventh heaven, the Prophet Abraham upon the highest level, the father of most of the prophets, the father of the prophets who came after him, including Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When they met him, mashallah, he welcomed them and they saw what is known as Al-Baytul Ma'mur. The, the, it is a house that is visited by the angels. Reportedly 70,000 angels enter this place of worship which is above the Kaaba, directly above the Kaaba, going very high above the seventh heaven. And the angels engage in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every day, 70,000 angels enter and the same angels do not return. The next day, there is another 70,000. And that happens every single day up to the end of time. Allahu Akbar. So imagine the number of angels there are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us goodness. Do you know that the Quran makes mention of the dua of the angels? The angels ask Allah, to forgive those who believe. And the angels ask Allah to forgive those who are repenting. And the angels engage in seeking forgiveness for those on earth. The angels declare the praise of their Rabb and they seek forgiveness for those on earth. Subhanallah, look at how lucky we are. When we are sitting now here, anyone who is engaged in anything wherein 
They are becoming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels have encircled them. And the blessings of Allah descending upon them. And the angels are praying for them, making dua for them, seeking forgiveness for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may He make us feel that. This is why we say, don't miss an occasion to learn more of your religion, to purify your knowledge and to authenticate it and to learn as much as you can in order for you to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the days pass instead of getting further away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us close. Now, a quick mention before we go further. The journey by night from Mecca to Jerusalem was known as Al-Isra. This, an entire surah has been named after. Subhanalladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa Alladhi barakna hawlah linuriyahu min ayatina Glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who took his slave on a journey by night from Makkah to Al-Mukarramah to Jerusalem, the place around which Allah has blessed in order for him, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be shown by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People cannot deny it, especially today, because we know how quick we can make a journey to the other corner of the world. And we know that technology has progressed even further than what a passenger aircraft can take you. Meaning as quick as a passenger aircraft. The passenger aircraft are very slow. They had had a Concorde. Why did they stop it? Because of a few disasters. But they have means of transport even faster than a Concorde. It's just that people cannot risk making use of it. Allahu Akbar. If you take a look at the missiles they have, within a few seconds they arrive where they have to. Allah protect us. Subhanallah. Imagine if someone had to sit on one of them. Allahu Akbar. Make sure there's no warhead there, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us goodness. And may He make us from amongst those who realize and understand. Nothing is impossible for Allah. Also, going up to the heavens, we made mention of Isa alayhi salam already having done that. And he remained there. The difference is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back to tell us. He actually came back and he informed us so accurately as we will see in a few moments. That ascension was known as Mi'raj. The Mi'raj going up. The Buraq did not go up with them, but it was Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam who took Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam in what is known as Mi'raj, like an elevator going all the way up by the will of Allah. How exactly it happened, that we will only find out when we ourselves get to the Akhirah. But we believe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that firm belief and conviction. So thereafter, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was made to go even higher. And he spoke with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He spoke with his Rabb. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this occasion of Mi'raj. When he had gone up beyond the seventh heaven, there is something at the end of the seventh heaven, a huge lot tree known as Sidratul Muntaha. It is the final, the last tree, a huge tree describing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes its fruit and its leaves as being like the ears of elephants and so on. And subhanallah, a huge tree, you cannot see its beginning and cannot see its end. A huge tree and that depicts the end of the seventh heaven beyond which is what I named Baytul Ma'mur moments ago. We spoke about it, the house that is visited by the angels and the house wherein the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes place by the angels. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the discussion that happened, within that discussion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a gift. A gift of what? A gift of salah. Salah, this prayer, we pray it five times a day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, that your followers should pray 50 times a day. That's a gift. Imagine salah is a gift. It protects us from so much. It disciplines us. It trains us. Control of your gaze, control of your movements, control of what goes in and out of your mouth. Everything in salah. I cannot eat in salah because I need to train myself. And at the same time, act of worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have so many medical benefits of salah. Although the prime aim of reading salah is for the pleasure of Allah. But we achieve so much 
you know, they call it a byproduct. It might not be exactly what you had aimed for, but you're getting so much more. They've thrown in freebies, so to speak, in our language today. You have perks, mashallah. You know, you have a job, mashallah, you get a salary, and at the same time, you get perks. So because I'm working here, I get this and I get that. My children's school fees is paid, and this happens. And even if I've got 10 children, it, everyone will benefit, subhanallah. This is a different example because it's Allah. Walillahi al-mathalul a'la. Allah has the highest of examples. So the only point being raised is when we fulfill salah, we will have so many side benefits, although the main purpose of fulfilling it would be for the pleasure of Allah in order to obey the instruction of Allah wholeheartedly. So it was a gift. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was coming down now. And when he came down, Musa alayhi salam was quick to ask him what happened there. So he says, well, this is what happened. And I spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I was given a gift of 50 salah. He says, no, go back. Go back to do what? Go back and ask for a decrease because your ummah is not going to manage. 50 salah a day, they're not going to manage. So the Prophet sallallahu went back up and it was revised downwards by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to 45. As he's coming back, Musa alayhi salam sends him back. Go back again. 45, still no good. And in fives, it kept on coming down until it stopped at five. Subhanallah, five. And on top of that, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam was told that those who fulfill the five correctly will have a reward multiplied by 10. So equivalent to 50. Subhanallah. We still, imagine I, whenever I read this hadith, I think of one thing. I think what if it was me or you there? Even the five, we would have probably said, you know what, let's revise it downwards to perhaps have it one a day, you know, or maybe even five a year or something of that nature. Allah forgive us. Wallahi. Why I say this is perhaps that might not be the case, but we are so lazy. Even the five that we do fulfill, if we fulfill them with such laziness, what if we had had 50? Subhanallah. Don't we owe Musa alayhi salam? Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. These were the prophets all related to one another, mashallah. And they really, they served us in a very great way. Salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhim jami'an. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all. Amen. So mashallah, this was the gift of salah. And the hadith continues to say, whoever fulfills a deed multiplied by 10. And on top of that, on the same occasion, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told, Something that brings tears to the eyes. Whoever fulfills a good deed, that good deed shall be multiplied by 10. And whoever intends to do a good deed, but did not manage to fulfill the intention, they will have a reward for that. And whoever intends to do a bad deed, but does not do it, neither will they have a reward nor a sin. So you plan to do a bad deed, but you didn't do it. No reward, no sin. And whoever plans to do a bad deed and executes it will get one sin next to their name. Allahu Akbar. Look at how the evil is not multiplied by the mercy of Allah. But the good is multiplied by the mercy of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we were granted at that point of mi'raj. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a question. Did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was asked that when he returned. Did you see Allah? He says, Nurun anna arah. Aisha radiallahu anha was also asked, Did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa see Allah? Speaking we know, but did he see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? She said, Nurun anna yarah. He is such nur. How would it have been possible for him to see him? Which means he did not see him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the sight. That seeing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a gift which is kept for Jannah, for paradise. Those who enter paradise, they will all have whatever they want in paradise. And on top of that, they will be asked, do you have whatever you want? And they will all say, let me word it differently. And we will all say, Alhamdulillah, may Allah make us from them. And we will all say, yes. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I have something more for you. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادَةً For those who have done good, they will get good in return. And we will give them even more. They have excess. What is more? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the barrier between them and Him. And they will see Him for the first time. And that will be the biggest gift. The biggest gift ever. 
given to any of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us from amongst them. Imagine to look at your Rabb. Today we look at people and we say, mashallah, good looking. And we look at motor vehicles and we look at cars and houses and so many different things. And we look at sceneries and we get excited. What about the maker of all that? Subhanallah. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. May Allah grant us the sweetness of looking at him as is in the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he came down sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the same evening he was back in his same bedding. The bedding still warm, which means it had not yet struck dawn and he was back. Subhanallah. And he tells those who are around him, Umm Muhani, according to one of the narrations, what had happened. And immediately they believed. Immediately because they knew that this is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.